Welcome to Reverse Engineering News. I'm your host, Hash. Thanks for joining. Today, I got a special treat for you. We're going on a field trip. We're taking this whole setup, and we're moving over to the other side of the room there. There's a microscope over there. You see it behind me. We're going to take a look at what microchips look like when you shine infrared light on them. Now, if it's a certain kind of microchip, where it's a silicon is exposed on the top, you're gonna to see we can actually see through it. A few weeks back, I did a reverse engineering news episode where I talked about Bunny Huang and the work he did looking through silicon. I thought it would be awesome to set this up myself and give it a try. I already have a microscope, I already have a camera, I already have uh, pretty much everything that's needed. The only thing I didn't have was the specific infrared LED. Well, now I do. I bought that specific infrared LED. It was like 10 bucks. I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to modify the camera that came with that Amscope microscope. It's super simple, even in comparison to what I showed last week. You know, we're talking like two minutes tops um, to remove the cut filter out of that camera. I'll show you that a little later in the episode, but first, let me tell you about Edwin Hugh. He's been on Hackaday a couple times, and he's got a few cool things he released. The one that I saw on Hackaday was a thing called a nano positioner that uses these little piezo motors, I guess you call them, that are stuck inside of this little mechanism that's kind of held together with magnets. And the piezo motor, when it's activated, causes it to move. but it causes it to move an incredibly precise amount, like on the scale of nanometers, so that you can have a little platform that can move a, a fairly good amount, you could say centimeter scale, but at the nanometer level, you wanna move 100 nanometers across. Now, why would you wanna do that? Well, if you have a fine probe and you're trying to probe a microchip, or you have a stage built and you're using it on a microscope to say move something around that's incredibly small, and image it, something like that would be amazing. They usually cost thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. And when built something that costs about a couple hundred bucks to do X, Y, and Z, which is crazy. I mean, it's like an order of magnitude at least, maybe more cheaper than what are the commercial offerings are. That seems to be Edwin's thing. Recently, he came out with a thing called a lab on a disc, which is him using some drone motors uh, some wireless charging and some little uh, kind of web cameras almost to create a whole laboratory on a disc for looking at microfluids and, and all these other kinds of crazy things. That's outside of the realm of stuff I experiment with, mostly, you know, kind of that maybe higher end chemistry or biology kind of work. But that's not the part that I think is the most fascinating. The part that's the most fascinating is the things that he came up with and how he solved the problem. You know, all these different pieces that he glued together same with the nano positioner, these different things he found and how he creatively solved the problem at a scale that drastically reduces the price, which I'm sure the companies that make these things love. Now, while I was looking at this and kind of doing this research for this episode, I saw Edwin send a tweet and he thanked a group called Hardware X. I'd never heard of Hardware X before. And so I went and took a look and uh, honestly, I was kind of blown away. It's a publication service, basically. Like you see, you know, these journal papers and things that get published in IEEE or something else. If you go click on one of those IEEE papers, what happens? Oh, it's paywall. You got to be a member of the IEEE. They want to sell you the thing for who knows how much money. Maybe the research was even funded by the public or whatever, but it ends up in there. And so you got to pay. Hardware X is not like that. Everything they publish is 100% open, and it seems the kinds of things they lean to publish are completely open source and stuff that you can replicate. Like if you read the nano positioner paper that I have down in the description, I mean, it's like, it's like all of the instructions of how this thing works, all the theory of it, and then how to replicate it, like exactly which parts were used, how much he paid for them, all the design files are in a GitHub. So if you want to build them, you can. Okay. Now let's take apart this camera real quick. Now it doesn't take much to get it apart. 
It's only a couple screwdrivers and some tweezers if you really want to do it. Now the first one is just these three hex screws that are around the outside here. And the other part is just two Phillips screws that hold the filter itself on here. Now I like to keep this stuff in a little, uh, a little container just so we don't lose it. And you can see right there, there's a sensor, that's it. Two screws, the thing's off. We pop this guy back on top here, and we're over and we're imaging. Okay, so here's an overview of the setup. We have the microscope right there. There's a power supply I'm gonna to use to run the LED that I'll shine so I can precisely control the current. No reason other than that, a potentiometer and a battery would be fine. But I just have this power supply, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. And then up here will be the image from the microscope. This is a little hard to see because the chip itself is silicon and this is etched on it. But it says CYW43438, which is the microchip. Okay, now this LED is rated for 100 milliamps. I'm going to set the power supply to 5 volts and I'll probably cap it at about 95 milliamps. I'll show you the difference as we're doing it as I vary the, the milliamp range up and down how that impacts how well it can see through the, the silicon. Now remove the camera and set it here. And on the screen, I'll show you what the camera's seeing on the monitor. We'll shine this LED in and we'll see what we see. And it goes super bright. I mean, the camera's definitely seen it. Now watch as I take the IR cut filter we took off and I'll put it in front of the camera. There it is. Now if I move, boom. So it blocks out a fair amount of infrared light. And the camera's obviously sensitive to this wavelength of, of LED, which is great. The world's jankiest setup. They say gaff tape does wonders. They're not lying. This stuff's amazing. So the more I turn up the visible light, the more all we see is the top of the silicon itself, right? And as I turn it down and it adjusts the exposure and the infrared light starts to be the only source, See inside the chip, that's crazy, huh? This is inside of that chip, like the silicon structure itself. And depending on where the LED is pointing, lights up more. This is a job for a nano positioner. Now, you can follow me on Twitter at BitBangingBytes. You can also join the Discord that I have. We're all over there chatting about reverse engineering stuff like 24-7. So if you want to chat about things like that or just generally want to hang out with like-minded people, jump on over. There's also the Richesum Wiki. The wiki is like you think of it like Wikipedia, but it's for reverse engineering. You can create an account, anything you're working on, something you've taken apart. Maybe you couldn't find images or pictures of the internals or something. And so you took it apart to see what it looked like. Take those pictures and put them on the wiki so that when someone else searches, they can find it. I did it with a water meter that I couldn't find any pictures of. And the company that made this little RF water meter tried to hide the pictures on the FCC website. And we don't do hiding pictures. I took pictures of all that crap. I put it on the wiki, and now it's out there. Anybody that wants to see it, if they go search for this thing, it pops up. That's how it works. We all kind of contribute. 
So create an account over there. Share something that you've worked on. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next week.